Lovely Media and we are coming to you from Chennai Cloud and Data Center Convention. Joining us now is a very special guest, Surajit Chatterjee from Capital Ann. Welcome to uh, Lovely you, Media, sir. I would like to begin by asking you, how have you seen the cloud and data center industry evolve over all these years in India? I think uh, it's a phenomenal change, I would say, you know, uh, especially post COVID era. I think the way uh, industry is shaping up, the way government is pushing the digitization uh, concept, the way uh, end customers are setting up their business infrastructures in the country. I think data center as an asset class has, has seen or will see a huge ramp up. And probably the reason is also because after getting a infrastructure status in the budget and the states rolling out the data center policies, True. I think it was a very critical important step towards this asset class in ensuring that investors are coming in, looking at right options to build. Therefore, the entire industry uh, is and an rampant growth. And just to add, we'll be soon touching a one gigawatt mark. I and thought in terms of, it. Yes, we've just touched it. And I think we've to the likes of China and Australia. So this, this itself shows that the market is moving at a very fast pace. And obviously with come also comes a lot of challenges on ground, but I think we are quite equipped to handle it. You know, that's very interesting because India also has this dream, vision for 2047, 100 years from independence. We actually want to be seen as a fully developed economy. That whole developing economy tag, we want to get rid of it. We want to be seen as an independent developed economy. What role do you foresee the data center industry playing in that? I, if I say data is the new oil, I, I, it is an understatement. I think that the amount of mobile phones and connectivity today India is boasting I think the digital revolution has already arrived. Where will you store all that data? Where will you process all that data? How the mining and the processing will happen? I think that's where the infrastructure comes. These infrastructures are designed to manage, store and process numeric uh, data points. I think from here, I will not be surprised to say that in the next five years, at least the data center as an asset class will be a developed uh, portfolio because why I say this very aggressive and forward statement is because today we have the global technology mm -hmm. we have the uh, global players who have entered India through a JV or direct we have large business groups including like us who are focused and have a clear vision to ramp up and with an understanding of on-ground uh, dynamics of India I think this mix is helping us to scale very fast. And that's the reason today, the first testimony is of an one gigawatt capacity, where India at one point of time between 2005 to 2010, we were not even 400 megawatt combined. So I think this journey has seen a lot. It is continuously evolving. I think the, the entire end user base is also very evolving. And that's where the entire uh, you know, go forward vision lies in terms of how do we scale up. Let's now talk about Chennai. We are here hosting uh, the convention. What makes this market special and how do you foresee it developing? If you look at the data center market share of the country, after Mumbai, which holds about close to 50%, Chennai is the second one holding about 15 to 16%. The reason is it has been a long cable landing station. It is an ideal market for customers to look at disaster recovery who are looking at primary and also the captive industry over the last eight to ten years whether it is IT whether it is BFSI whether it is uh, logistics whether it is pharma Chennai brings you a flavored mix of customers apart from a very old and a tested platform of hyperscalers with this mix it remains a hotbed I think Chennai also has or rather Tamil Nadu as a state also has developed. Today we see new corridors opening up, traditionally from a number two to a new areas like um, Serusiri, Sipcourt, you know, these are the new areas. From a group perspective, I think Chennai has been a very, very core focus for Capital Land as a group. We have huge investments in, in IT parks, mm. uh, industrial, logistics, and now data centers. So I think 
for capital land and for the industry across asset class, Chennai will continue to rem remain very, very relevant and very focused as a destination. But apart from, as you said, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore to an extent, Delhi, Noida, what are some of the other markets uh, that you would be willing to, say, bet on in the future? The markets that you think would make a difference? Uh, I think typically the corridors, if you look at India perspective, it is Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad and Bangalore. They will mm. continue to play the important roles because mm. capacities are built here. Mm. But I think we are also witnessing new markets like Noida, mm. new markets like Kolkata, new markets like, you know, edge locations like Pune and Gurgaon. Mm. So I think your, your go-to market is a combination of a very hybrid environment where you build capacities, larger ones in the core markets, mm. and you create a periphery of edge markets in and around so that your customer base are able to experience both the situations to the best of their needs. Let's now move on to something that has everyone excited, artificial intelligence. AI adoption is inevitable, but do you think it's happening at the right pace? Or do you think we are also still trying to figure out everything that we can do with it? Because it's just exploded. I think you said it very right. It just exploded. We were already into our uh, ramp-up plan of core building, you know. And in comes AI. But I think AI data centers will look very different from the traditional one. How is that? They will be very, very power hungry. Their rack densities will look very different. The floor loadings will look very different. So that building typically would be AI designed infrastructure. And we see a huge potential there. And I think already the state governments are taking enough and more uh, note of that. Because today, on an average, if you look at Deborah, today, any new player is announcing a capacity size of 70 to 100 megawatts. I think AI will announce startup with 200 megawatts. So I think with that kind of power requirement, the states need to also get ready from a grid perspective. That's what I was going to come to, in fact, because AI is a major power guzzler. We are already having questions about sustainability. Are we even going to catch up to all that demand? We have to catch up. There is no choice. The only point is by when, because it's a life cycle, you know, the, 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 the on-ground built-up time continues to remain the same. Mm. But I think enough and more thoughts, industry, associations, service providers, they're all are putting. But I will, my personal bet in next two to three years, we will be seeing the first AI data center in the country. Excellent. Uh, AI also requires people to upskill or reskill. And when it comes to the people in the industry, there's also a certain amount of anxiety. How would you like to empower the people who work in data centers? Are, are we even teaching them right in schools and colleges these days? Because we do have a skills shortage. How do you propose we address that skills shortage problem? Very right. There we have, we have been experiencing skills shortage. And I think that one way to address is that, uh, you know, the periphery industry of data center, which are the the, the OEM guys, the PMC guys, I think that's an area where service providers have to work jointly to build that skill set. Most of our jobs from an operation side is outsourced, maybe to the tune of about at least 50 to 60 percent. I think they bring in those technical skill set and I think various programs where you as a service provider participate with those OEM fraternity in ensuring that they are never going down in terms of. I think a second step also should be that industry forum should also now talk to government on opening certain institutes in terms of, you know, raising talent for this kind of an asset class because AI would require very specialized skill set. Maybe today we have only 15-20% of that, you know, we need to build on it. So I think those thoughts are already on in because you can't stop AI entering, it will enter and, and you need to be ready. Mm. So I think how India got ready pre-COVID from a 400, 500 megawatt to an one gigawatt, I'm sure and very confident that this will also happen. Perfect. Finally, sir, uh, you were one of our uh, guests at the opening. You also were one of our speakers at the first panel discussion. What has been your experience so far at Chennai CDC and what brings you here? You know, W Media and, and Capital Land has been associated with W Media for long. My, my, prior to my, this current uh, experience, other organizations also have been. 
I think it's a very blended platform. Why I say that is because it brings in industry, it brings in government, it brings in customers, and it also brings OEMs. Now, we have all everybody at one floor. It is also very, very progressive in terms of what kind of topics we should discuss. Today, if you look at our panel discussion, it was talking about the life of a data center. While the question looks very relevant, the answers are multifold. I think this platform has been quite instrumental in bringing those relevant points. Online, offline discussions do happen. There are a lot of thoughts you take back, you know, and you build on those. And I think it allows you to open up and, and discuss those without, you know, thinking or reasoning out that is it relevant or not. So I think this platform is a combination of all those. And that's the reason we find it very relevant. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for speaking. Thank you, Deborah. It was nice talking to you. Thank you so much and giving an opportunity. Thank you.